Welcome back to the last week of Advent Devotions 2020. We have all the candles lit. The first one was hope, then peace. The pink was joy. This week is love. And the white candle is the Christ candle. So let's dive right in to explaining about love. Humanity has been trying to figure out love for centuries. We express it through amazing love songs, from Elvis Presley in Love Me Tender, to Sonny and Cher in I Got You Babe, to the most recent Lady Gaga singing Shallow in the movie Star is Born. Society continues to try to recognize who or what is love. But we Christians know that true love comes from God. In the book of Corinthians chapter 13, the ever popular verses, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always loves, trusts, hopes, and perseveres. Love never fails. Love is a lifelong process or transformation. Understanding love is understanding the very nature of God, Yahweh Elohim. Living it out is our greatest quest when we encounter Emmanuel, God with us, or who this season is all about. God came to be with us in the truest form of love known to mankind. We celebrate it every Christmas as love came down and manifested itself in a newborn baby boy. We see love three different ways depicted in the Christmas story. Because of Joseph's love for Mary, he stayed with her when he found out she was pregnant with what he thought was an out of wedlock baby. Then Mary was a natural at motherly love for her baby Jesus, the Christ child. Ultimately, we see God's love for everyone by sending his son for us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus focused on preaching love throughout his ministry. He gave us the golden rule, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, and with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. When Jesus was asked of the two, which was more important, he said both, for if you love your neighbor as yourself, you are expressing God's love. They are inseparable, for love is an action. It is a choice that you make to seek the well-being of people other than yourself. This is genuine love. The kind of generous love reflects the very heartbeat of God. Authentic love is how well you treat the person you can't stand. In Jesus' words, you shall love your enemy and do good to them, expecting nothing in return. This is the very character of God himself. This is how Jesus lived. Aren't we supposed to emulate Jesus. He was constantly helping and serving people around him in very practical and tangible ways. Washing the disciples' feet, letting the people allow the children to come to him, healing people from their infirmities, gently caring all the way, turning that other cheek when he walked in Jerusalem to the cross. He was consistently 
moving toward poor people who wouldn't benefit him in return. He showed love to the forgotten and unlovable, the undesirable, the lovers. If that has how God has loved us, then we are to show that same love to others. Love appears in the Bible somewhere between one to 300 times, depending upon your translation. This year has been a challenge. We're struggling to see the love this Christmas. However, in Romans chapter eight, it says, for I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels, angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That means the coronavirus cannot separate us from God. And all of the other unbelievable things that are going on, even though it feels though the social distancing separates us, God is alive and well. He reigns. His love is alive and well on the planet Earth. That's what Christmas is all about, says Linus to Charlie Brown in the cartoon. The baby is born in a manger. The shepherds saw the love. The barn animals saw the love. The three kings saw the love. And Mary and Joseph felt his presence. The question is, can we share his presence with others during social distancing? Well, let me tell you, over the last 10 months, despite social distancing, despite COVID-19, we have shared God's presence. We have had some amazing stories in this beautiful Rocky River United Methodist Church. People that have been gravely ill, our church family became the hands and feet of the tiny baby Jesus. Meals are brought in to people that are suffering from the coronavirus. Phone calls, emails, text messages, gifts, bills were paid, errands were run, most importantly, prayer, prayer chains, holding people up, carrying people, though they were struggling terribly, physically, emotionally, mentally, prayer works. Some of the church staff becomes ill, the rest of the church family takes over. The love of Christ reigns despite hardship. We turn it around because nothing can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Friends, we are loving our neighbors. Keep passing it on. Keep on keeping on. So now, let's focus on the final candle, the white Christ candle. White symbolizes purity. Some churches make that Christ candle larger than the rest to show that Christ is the reason for the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love that we have in Jesus, the reason for the season. Remember that one? Not surprisingly, the Christ candle represents Christ and the role he plays in the story. Jesus brought the light into the world through his arrival on earth as a baby. We cannot be Christians without Christ and without love. We have discussed some of the ways that our church continues to show love. Christ connects all the Advent candles. Through him, we have the hope, the peace, the joy, the love. Without him, we wouldn't have any of those things. Christ stepped down into the dark, cold world in Bethlehem on that cold night to light the world. 
It shines brightly. Because of him, we can be that light to others, showing them the true meaning of Christmas. We, as a faith family, by our actions, are living the words, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, the whole meaning of Christmas can be explained in a four-letter word, L-O-V-E. You sent your gift of pure love to us that first Christmas. Love laid in a scratchy hay of a manger in a meager barn in Bethlehem. All of your love was robed in the delicate skin of a baby and wrapped in swaddling clothes. You came as an innocent one to walk the earth in complete love and sacrificially give your life for the sins of your children. There is no greater love than this that a man should lay down his life for his friends. The greatest gift of all came that first Christmas. It wasn't a beautiful package set under a decorated tree. The greatest gift came wrapped in the flesh of baby Jesus. Our perfect gift would later be wrapped in the scars of our sin and nailed to the rugged wooden cross on Calvary because of love. Father, this final week of Advent, fill our hearts and minds with the significance of that truth. Thank you, Lord, for loving us enough to send Jesus to bring us to life eternal. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Now go and share that love of the Christ child with everyone you meet. Merry Christmas.